All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome everyone. Hopefully you can still hear me. For those who are just jumping on, the little bit of a technical difficulty with the, uh, with the camera. Um, but we'll walk through a bit of an exercise because if you guys, I know when I posted earlier in the week, uh, I posted along everyone to basically share on Transparent Tuesday, what they're going through, right? What emotional patterns they're feeling and what they would like to work through and transcend. And I didn't know what a response I was gonna get, but I woke up the next morning and had like 15 of you all message, you know, sharing your heart, sharing your, um, sharing your vulnerabilities, sharing the patterns you're working through. So I thought for the first 10 minutes or so, in this call, I'd love to, I'd love to sort of walk you through an exercise or at least get everyone looking inward. And the reason being is because obviously we're all in our busy lives. We're now uh, in our businesses and most of the time we're in our head. And a lot of people are trying to build businesses based on their fears, doubts, and frustrations. Um, and that's what we do here. For those who are new on the call and new in the group, what this group is basically, uh, formulated around is the aspect of really what I call the, th the four M's. So one is mindset, which is what we're going to be working on in a minute. Um, and two is the mastermind calls where we have experts come in and teach us the latest tactics, tools, and strategies. We have the third M, which is really about member collaboration. So everyone here is doing the heart centered work and really looking to collaborate and, and contribute and partner with each other, which is awesome as well. And then the fourth injection in this, uh, in this group is going to be making a difference. And I'm really, really excited in, in getting creative with how we, can, um, how we can add more of making a difference around the world to different uh, worthy causes. And we can start coming together with our creativity and expertise and in, in really make a difference. Uh, so that's exciting. And that's, it's really cool to be on a call with you guys. You know, we've got plenty of people here live. And it's awesome to see that you guys are the types of people who are willing to look inward, willing to do the internal work, because you know that's going to be the basis. That's going to be the, the platform of possibility for your business. And um, it's, it's an absolute pleasure. It's an absolute honor that you guys are here with me in, in, in doing this work. So uh, in this space, this is really where we start to look in. This is really where we start to... Um, pay attention to our bodies and pay attention to the present moment. I've had some huge shifts in the last couple of days um, by uh, I was watching a Carl Seitz video. I was reading um, the, the book by Eckhart Tolle and I just really started doing a lot of meditation. I added another hour in the last couple of days. So I was doing about three or sometimes even four, um, four hours in a day, just meditating, just sitting down. And so I'd love to share with you guys, uh, the type of process that I was going through and then what you guys can also um, do right now in looking inward and transcending these patterns, whatever it may be. A lot of you said there was a lot of fear of um, uncertainty, a lot of doubt, a lot of worry, um, a lot of opinions of other people and what that means. And so I'm sure you can see, you can start, if you're starting from that place and you're in resistance to it, that energy flows into your creativity, flows into your business, your relationships, your decisions, all those different things. And so it'd be awesome for you guys, uh, just for a moment, if you would, to just look inward and just to pay attention to the physical sensations in your body. All right, one question I love asking people is, are you still breathing? And to answer that question, you really have to start paying attention to your breath. And so it's in these calls where we really just start to breathe. We start to pay attention to our physical body. We start to pay attention to the present moment. And that's what I invite you to do right now is whatever you posted the other day, whatever pattern you have that's emerging, whether it be fear, doubt, and frustration, just allow it to be there for a moment and just breathe. So as you breathe deep, as you pay attention to the energy, the air going into your lungs, you might want to also notice the sensations and the vibrations 
and the relaxation or tension in your body. Can you feel the tingling in your hands? The energy in your legs? The energy in your heart? So continue to breathe deep and just feel that energy. And as you do that, just pay attention to what pattern that was, whether it be fear, doubt, frustration, overwhelm, stress. And just for a moment, in this present moment, be the safe space for that emotion. Be present with that emotion and give yourself the time, give yourself the freedom to allow it to be there. Be the space for that emotion. Be the space for that sensation, that feeling. Notice where you feel it in your body. So many business owners get, in and get stuck when they resist or they avoid these emotions. This is a time where we can actually just start paying attention. Pay attention to your physical body, pay attention to this space, pay attention to this emotion that's coming up. And just allow it to be there, welcome it. So be the space, be the space for this emotion. And notice what happens when you stop resisting. And give yourself time to also recognize it's not your job to move this emotion on. It's not your job to transcend it. It's not your job to do anything with it. It's your job to just be the safe space for it. So continue to breathe, continue to feel your heart, continue to feel this space. And just notice what it's like to just finally allow it to be there. And while you allow for this emotion to be there, you might want to also be aware and pay attention to where your ego believes something needs to happen or something, or you need to become something for you to be enough. What is it that your ego believes needs to happen in order for you to feel significant, in order for you to feel superior, in order for you to feel important, in order for you to feel unique? Do you need to achieve a certain dollar amount? Do you need to achieve a certain followers? Do you need to achieve a certain relationship? Do you find superiority in your knowledge, in your experience? in your things, whether it be your house, your car, your family, right? Something, maybe you have the latest iPhone, I don't know. Notice where you are starting to be driven by ego and thinking something needs to happen or I need to be a certain way to feel significant. And also pay attention to where the stories you are believing that lead you to feel inferior or insignificant. And start to notice those patterns. Really start to notice those patterns. Because when you start to notice and pay attention to the ego, you can start to see that it loses its grip just a little bit. Ego can't survive where it's noticed. Ego can't survive and be driven in places where it's seen. And can you pay attention? Can you start to link where this fear, doubt, frustration, overwhelm, stress may be linked to ego? Thinking something needs to happen for you to feel enough. Me personally, I get caught up so much in thinking I need to achieve more or have more. Another way of saying that is that I need, 
I, I don't feel like I'm enough. I need more to make me fulfilled, which is a story by the ego. The more I look at that, the more it dissolves. And the more I start to pay close attention to this present moment, all you have is this present moment. And you can hold space for this emotion. You can hold space for the ego. You can notice all these patterns. And in this space, you can continue to just breathe and notice that this present moment is all you have. The air you're breathing in right now, the air you're breathing out, the attention you're paying with your heart, that's all we have. That's all you ever will have is this present moment. So just continue to be in this present moment. Continue to be here. Notice what's around you. Notice the beauty around you. Notice the beauty inside yourself. Notice what happens internally when you drop the ego story around what society thinks you need to do in order to feel enough. Society believes you need, you need to achieve six or seven figures in order for you to feel enough. You need to achieve this significant online business for you to feel enough. You need to have the perfect family or the perfect house or live in the perfect location for you to feel enough. Notice what happens internally when you start to notice where the ego is paying attention to those stories and believing those stories. What level of peace can you feel when you just pay attention to this present moment? And what's possible if you take action from this place of allowing everything, this place of allowance, this place of acceptance, when you take action from this place where you're not in resistance to anything, that's when your action is guided. That's when your action is inspired. That's when you have insight. That's when you start getting nudges from your heart and you start taking leaps with courage, which all of you are so perfectly doing at the moment. So I want to release the stress, knowing that it's not your job to move on these emotions, these patterns, but it's your job to pay attention, pay attention to this present moment, pay attention to these patterns. And if as a byproduct they transcend, perfect. If not, continue to feel. Continue to feel and to continue to be with it. Continue to be in acceptance. So if you guys could maybe type in the chat what it is you're feeling now. What it is you're feeling. Do you feel some sort of uh, awareness, heightened awareness? Jennifer says, peace and presence. Awesome. What else do you feel? Do you feel confident? We got confident from Andrea. Calm, says Becky. Awesome. Expanded awareness. Beautiful. Loved. Peace and presence. Hannah says, overwhelmed. Awesome. It's beautiful in everything that we feel, open to possibilities. Wrapping arms around heart, peaceful and loving, beautiful. This is what happens when you just accept. You can accept everything, welcome it. And when you live in acceptance of what is, it brings you to the present moment and you can take action from this place. And this is the place, what I call the platform of possibility. When you're in the, pl the pl platform of possibility, you become, you absolutely become the energy of safety. This is true safety. This is true security. It's found in this place, not something your ego think needs to happen. So I just thought I'd walk that through for you guys. You can feel free to pay attention to this and take this with you for the rest of the day, the rest of the week, more than happy to answer any questions that come up for you. And um, yeah, definitely be keen to see what comes up. And, and even if you want to create a conversation or a post in the community for support or just to share or just be an inspiration, that would be incredible. Uh, what I'd love to do right now is to welcome AJ 
as a panelist, AJ is going to be a, an amazing contributor in the group, not only with his expansive knowledge and, and expertise, but also with his, his big heart. So I'd love to welcome him. Let's see what we can do here. AJ, where are you? Here he goes. Feel free to unmute yourself. Okay. My man. Hello. Can you hear me? I can. I can indeed. Everyone give AJ a big warm welcome. And uh, it's an absolute pleasure, my friend. Uh, so AJ will be, he's an, now an admin in the group. He's a, um, a keen contributor. He loves, he loves just the mission of expanding the consciousness of entrepreneurs. So once I started getting to know AJ, we started doing some work together and man, it's just so clear how big his heart is, how it's clear what sort of, uh, what sort of person he is. And so with our work together, we, we recognize that we just share the same passions. We share the same mission of heightening the, the level of consciousness of the planet and of, of business owners and entrepreneurs. So I'm like, man, we need to do some, some things together. We're not too sure where it's going to pan out, how it's going to go. And we love that. And, uh, and so AJ is just going to be an absolute uh, powerhouse in the group and, and just adding so much value. So I love, man, if you could uh, just give a little bit of an introduction of yourself and, um, and what it is you do, where it is you've, you've come from, what did you learn in your experience? And then uh, we can take it from there and start talking more mindset and, and helping people shift from your expertise. Absolutely, Tyson. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the kind words and I'm grateful to be here. Great to connect with you guys. I'm based in New York and uh, how far back do I want to go? So I came to the, the States as an immigrant. I was a one-year-old boy and uh, you know, my family, they were immigrant family. We grew up very, very poor and here in the States, we have like public assistance and welfare. So I grew up in extreme poverty and I always wanted to live the American dream. So for me, I had to deal with a lot of uncertainty and scarcity in the household. So growing up, my family was very poor. So they were very big on, you know, complaining about not having enough money. We can't pay the rent. How are we going to feed the kids? I was the oldest of four boys. So being the oldest in the family, I was hearing these conversations over and over and over again, and I realized later in life that it was really affecting my mindset towards money. So I grew up with an extreme scarcity mentality. And of course, when you grow a business and you wanna serve more people, scarcity holds you back dramatically. And I had to learn throughout all the years of shifting from scarcity to abundance and once I started my business I realized that I was having a hard time with my clients you know I was not charging what I was worth and I was scared to invest in myself I was very frugal holding on to money and uh, there's a term in the States in the South it says scared money don't make no money and that was a big insight that I had because I was hoarding it and holding on to it tightly and I started to shift my mindset around that and uh, one thing it did, it opened up a lot of abundance. So once I started making these changes in my money mindset, I then started to grow and scale my business. So my business is called Online Super Coach, and I help coaches, personal trainers, and consultants scale their online businesses with their marketing, their sales funnels, you know, delivering through virtual infrastructure, writing books, starting podcasts, doing seminars. And I've coached over 700 people over the past 10 years and one of the biggest things that I go into is shifting someone's money mindset, you know, because once I shifted mine, I went from scarcity to abundance where, you know, for a long time in my business, the most I could make was like $10,000, $12,000 a month. And once I started doing this inner work, all of a sudden, I started scaling $20,000 a month, $40,000 a month, $60,000 a month, well over $100,000 a month. And I realized that my relationship with money is more of an energy right? Because you can have all the different tactics and all the different strategies. And if you implement them on a weak foundation, you're not going to get very far. And that's one of the things I want to do today to help you guys shift your money mindset and 
create new beliefs around abundance and really see where the blocks are, right? Because I think we all have a degree of money blocks, right? Whether it's in our income, whether it's what we're charging, or sometimes we could be on, on a sales conversation and we severely limit ourselves because the moment we talk about the price, we could get uh, very uh, scared and very nervous to, to talk about it. And I want to just make some shifts for you guys. So in the next 24 hours, you have a different relationship with money, but also going into the next week, the next month, the next year, you could have a whole shift in how money comes into your life. So are you guys ready to go through an exercise that'll really shift your money beliefs? If so, just type this in the comments. I am. Great. Uh, yes. I'll make awesome, sure my, my chat set to all panels and attendees. I mean. Yes, 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 awesome. Everyone's Jess, keen. You know, everyone, everyone's keen. Yeah. So one of the things that have helped me tremendously in, in getting over this is really just understanding how the mind works. You know, um, I always go back to a famous uh, Thomas Edison quote. He says, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And that's a power of our beliefs, right? Our beliefs are so powerful and our beliefs about ourselves, our business, money, um, just about everything is so profound that it's very difficult to outwork a limiting belief. So let's talk about money, you know, and uh, what I would really appreciate is some honesty. You know, obviously this is a private recording and, you know, my main purpose is to serve you and help you. So I would love for you to be fully honest and transparent. You know, I'm always about that because, you know, all progress starts with the truth. And when you're truthful with the situation, you could also shift it and make progress. So <clears throat> let me have some tea over here. We're all about our tea on these calls. I've got my green yes. tea. <laughs> Team tea. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny and I, I see she's on, on the call. You have an inside joke about tea. But uh, it's powerful and uh, it's good because it grounds you. And that's what yeah. it's all about here. Grounding. Yes, I love my tea. So, uh, so when I was diving into the mind, you know, I became so fascinated just reading a lot of books and, and watching a lot of videos that I decided to go back to school and I got my master's degree in psychology. And uh, within psychology, we've learned really powerful ways of shifting beliefs, habits, and shifting your life and business. So out of all the principles of psychology, here, here's a deep question. I'm curious if anyone knows this. Um, what is the most profound way to make a massive change in your life? So if there's an area of psychology that you could really dive into and focus on that'll make the biggest change in your life, I would love for you to share in the comments, what do you think that is? Okay, changing your thinking. Yeah, that's, that's a component. What else? Mindset, yes. Yourself, your actions. Okay, we're getting closer. Habits, definitely. There's a deeper layer besides your words, your actions. Perception is extremely powerful. Values. Actually, ding, ding, ding. I'm going to give it to Reginald. Reginald got it right. It's changing your identity, right? Because who you are is far more important than what you do and how you view yourself. Uh, there's a great book on this called Psycho Cybernetics, and it goes very deep into our identity. And our identity is really just how we believe we are and the person that we are, our actions, our mindset, our subconscious really gets everything in there. Yes, Maxwell Maltz. Uh, if you've not read the book or listened to the audio, I highly recommend it. I actually go back to it every single year. I learned something new about our identity, right? And a great example is um, quitting smoking, you know? So there's a lot of people that smoke and they have a hard time quitting. So there's one way to have the verbal representation to say, you know, I'm going to try to quit 
smoking cigarettes or I'm going to smoke one cigarette a day and then eventually stop, right? So these are just some things people do when they quit smoking. A whole nother shift in identity is I don't smoke. I'm a non-smoker. So having that belief that you don't smoke doesn't even entertain the thoughts of a cigarette entering your mouth. So that's just one example. And of course, it permeates in every area of your life. So let's talk about, you know, some identities, you know, and, and, and going into the different aspects of money, right? So we can start with that right there. What does the word money mean to you? Money, what does it all mean? Some people have a very positive connection with money. Others very negative. And again, our identity and our beliefs are really shaped by our life experiences, our parents, society, the educational system, our conversations, everything that enters our minds. So Jennifer says money is a tool. Steven says money is a choice. Reginald, abundance, a way to feel. Money is an enabler. Energy, something you need to work for you. You don't deserve to have it. Jess says debt, but should be flow. Great awareness there. Money brags. Andrea says stress. Something for future only, only for successful people. Yeah. You know, um, growing up because the money was so difficult in my household, uh, my parents had very negative uh, beliefs about wealthy people. So it was whenever someone um, w was on television that had money, we'd watch a show called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. And my father would always talk about, wow, these people are so greedy. You know, they have so much money or they did very, very manipulative things to have this much money. And I was like, wow, really dad? That's how you become rich, you do bad things? So imagine how that affected me growing up. You know, greedy. Greed is good. That's a line from Gordon Gekko. Um, you know, again, that's the power of our identity that in a split second we could turn it all around. You know, myself growing up in extreme poverty being on public assistance, six of us in a one bedroom apartment, I had to overcome a lot, but I realized it all became a single decision. And some of the stuff I'm gonna share with you today to start making that shift. So when you think about your own money blocks, what comes up? Like, is it something to do with your business? or in ha not having the income you know you deserve, do you find yourself spending a lot and having a hard time holding on to money? I would love to hear some money blocks that you have. I like to give more than I receive. That seems to be my block. Okay, well that's amazing that you're such a giving person. I know I had a block personally. Um when, because when, when I jumped into full-time coaching, you know, my mindset, my thoughts were around, oh, I just need to bring in this amount to be safe or be secure or whatever it may be. And a real big shift happened for me when I started obviously doing this internal work, but I started thinking from possibility rather than scarcity of, I just need to make this amount for me to be okay and safe. I just need to make, I just need to get this many clients for me to, you know, pay rent. And it was very much scarcity in that way. And once I started thinking from possibility, like, man, how good can this get? Who can I partner with? You know, what network, what networks can I expand into? What reach can I have? What can I do with the community? How much value can we expand? Once I started thinking from possibility, that was a really big thing for me, but I, I'm sure a lot of people here can um, also notice that in, them, in themselves of thinking from a place of lack of like, what little do I need to make in order for me to be okay? I found that was a block for me for a long time. 
Yeah, I could totally relate to that. Thank you for being transparent, Tyson. And uh, I myself, like again, just growing up very poor, I was always uh, big on hoarding money and being very frugal. So I'd often have those same thoughts of like, okay, I just need $3,000 in the next 30 days and I'll be fine. And I just, okay, great. That's all I need and that's all I'm going to get. And, uh, you know, this is a great quote. It says, ask and you shall receive. And you have a choice in every single present moment to think, speak, and act from your current circumstance or think, speak, and act from your big vision. And whatever you do in that present moment, that shifts your identity, but also shifts your external reality from the inside out. So these are really good, the different uh, money blocks. Spend, but not get paid. I need to help others whose need is greater than mine. Only dishonest people make big money. I can't keep big money. Needing to help others whose needs are greater than mine. Having it effortlessly flow to me continuously. Absolutely. And, and, and Tyson made a good point earlier, how I was saying money is an energy. And just like he was mentioning, you know, if, if he's operating from the big vision, all of a sudden that's where you come from place of creativity and possibility where you could partner up with someone who has all of your ideal clients or the people you want to work with and they could help you create more abundance just because you help them and they help you. It's a win-win situation or coming up with this simple idea. You know, we've all heard these amazing stories. I was reading recently about uh, the woman who created Spanx, um, Sarah Blakely. You know, if you're familiar with Spanx, it's that really tight thing you wear around your waist under your nice clothes to suck everything in. So I think she had like $600 in her bank account. And one day she just had the idea for Spanx. And now it's a multi-billion dollar company. And that's one of the biggest things I've learned and throughout all my years. I mean, I'm, I'm an avid reader. I love reading biographies and autobiographies of super su successful people. Uh, number one, you get to really understand that every successful person goes through extreme ups and downs. So they go through so many hardships. And one thing that I've come to find is that the more successful a person is, their higher tolerance for pain. So the more t pain they could take, the higher up the ladder they go, right? And another quote, mo money, mo problems. And there are bigger problems. And sometimes when you're facing bigger problems, it's a sign that you are up leveling. Another thing is that many of these people were able to create what is called an insight rich environment. So we all know when you're in a very clear, calm mind, you're full of creativity. And all it takes is a single million dollar idea to come in to change the whole game for you, right? And one of the biggest problems is if a person is in a situation where they're thinking more of the same, you know, like, oh man, you know, January is gonna be more of the same and I'm gonna have the same old issues, the same old problems going into the new month, going to new year. And it's not really possibility-based thinking, it's circumstance-based thinking. When you're thinking in possibility, you're full of hope, you're full of optimism, but also vibrating at the higher frequency, you're in a place where you're more attractive to million dollar ideas, to key people, to different things that can come in your path and just open up new doors. So these are really, really good. Um, you know, lack, easy come, easy go. Having it flow effortlessly, okay. That's a very good one. And so we've got some good money blocks here. And now we're going to just do a little shift, a shift in our possibility. So I love this exercise because it is very, very exciting and also makes us realize that in a split second, everything could turn completely around. And if I could wave a magic wand and we could go into the end of this year, the end of 2020, looking back, let's say December 2020, 10 months from now, looking back, what would be a dream come true scenario 
with your money and finances, right? So we're thinking in possibility. A lot can change in 10 months. A lot can change. You know, baby's born in nine months. So imagine what could change in 10 months. And so many new shifts, so many new people, ideas, possibilities, opportunities. But if you could look back on the year and you just had the most amazing financial win, what does that look like to you? Right now, intuitively, thinking from a place of possibility and vision, speak it into existence. What is your dream financial situation? Uh, could be a monthly income goal. How much you want to make at the end of the month? It could be the ability to pay off a major debt. Um, you know, actually two months ago, uh, December of 2019, I set one of my lifelong goals and that was to buy my father a car. And I had the great opportunity of taking him to a Mercedes dealership and I got him his dream car, which was a Mercedes SUV. And I'll tell you what, it was one of the best feelings that I ever had because I bought myself nice things and it's great, but to buy your father, your parents, someone you love a gift, it's, it's, it's so fulfilling. And I was like, wow, that's a beautiful thing about money because a lot of people say that money is not everything. They have not given enough of it away. And I'm like, wow, if I can make more money, I make more so I could give more. So what is a dream come true money scenario for you? Could be a vacation for your family. You know, looking back in the next 10 months, what's your dream come true scenario? This is a power of setting a strong intention and then reverse engineering it on, okay, what do we need to do in this time frame to make it a reality? So Jennifer says, the ability to travel with my kids and experience the world through immersing in it. That is so beautiful. Yes, travel is where it's at. Speaking of travel, in two weeks, I'm actually going to Brazil, uh, Carnival. I've always wanted to go to Brazil. I've wanted to experience a uh, Carnival. So I'm very excited for that trip, being there for about 10 days. Um, it, is, it is one of a dream come true. And just the, the, the culture, the experience, and the immersiveness, you know, because every time you travel, you come back a totally different person. Uh, Barbara says 120000 this year, paid up lifestyle. Yes, good old six-figure land. Hannah says the ability to support and create animal sanctuaries and travel first class, not to worry about cost. Yes, I love how you said that. Not to worry about cost. That is a beautiful thing right? So the ability to give back, to do charitable things, to buy things for your loved ones and just hand the credit card and not worry about the money. What else? What else comes up? And I, I can just interject that because th this is the exact thing. When I started heavily falling in love with contributing to this group, that's when my level of creativity, you know, starts skyrocketing. And that's when, uh, that's when, ideas for you know new clients and new business opportunities started flowing as well that's why i'm excited to start introducing more ways in which this community can also start to give back and 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 combine our forces to create a difference around the world um because it'll elevate your level of consciousness it'll elevate your level of uh you know level of thinking where you just be thinking on a different channel where all of a sudden you'll start to you know the ways in which you can make money uh, not only will come in abundance, but you'll also start to minimize the, uh, the strain that the ego does have on making money. So a lot of the, obviously like before, we're talking about the ego in terms of how much we think we need to make in order to be enough. That falls away in the moments when you're focusing on contribution, focusing on giving and making a difference. You, you, you just elevate your level of consciousness. So that's a real reason why I'm super excited to, introduce more and more ways in which we can come together to contribute. because so I know it's going to mean such a huge difference in elevating your business as well. I totally agree. I totally agree. Again, a contribution is just an energetic act of abundance and the ability to give back, whether it's to your loved ones or to a great cause, 
you're saying that there's more than enough to go around. So I'm in a, a very abundant universe and I could just give. And the more you give, the more you're able to receive, right? Because it's a beautiful art of giving and receiving. So this is really, really, really cool stuff, you know? Um, buying one property per month, do what I want without worrying about money, pay off my student debts, wellness retreat in Australia. I would love to visit the three kids that I sponsor in Compassion International. Wow, that's amazing. Raise the world's happiness level. Yeah, that's quite a goal. Jennifer says, I'm fine that I'm challenged by this question. I can think of lots of answers, but they don't feel like the truth. Kind of like I'm just making stuff up. Yes, and it's whatever you like it to be, you know? Um, we're living in a world of fantasy and possibility, so it's just really looking at what's the vision, what excites you, what is a dream come true, you know? And I love to do this uh, exercise that, you know, if, if you just won the lottery, let's say you have $100 million in the bank, you know, would you still be doing what you're doing now? Would you be spending the way you do now? How would you shift the things? How would you give back? So it's coming from a place of possibility because again, uh, sometimes it is the ego or the old subconscious identity that's pulling us back and says, no, no, we, we don't deserve that. Or that's too outlandish, that's too crazy. But it all shifts with your identity and it shifts with, with your vision. And again, coming from a place of contribution because when you are able to give more, you're also able to receive at a higher capacity. Jenny says, create infinite experiences that serve and grow those I love while investing and growing my wealth. Yes, serving and growing. Gail says, I concur. I have to make something up because my dream would be to land the ocean reading, do windsurf, and do mostly nothing. Yes, and there's no right or wrong, you know? Um, there's a lot of people that uh, I follow who've reached financial independence, and their biggest goal is to have passive income coming in so that they could just do as they please. They could just be on a beach, or they could travel the world, or backpack, and money is coming in back and forth. So actually I'm gonna do an exercise for that because I find that when there is a target, it's a lot easier to accomplish our goals, you know? Because uh, I don't know the age group of everyone that's on here, but eventually we wanna retire, you know? And I've been doing a lot of reading and research on people that retire in their 20s and 30s because it's fascinating to me how you could actually manipulate your finances to be in a world of giving back and being free, but never having to work a day in your life. So here is the exercise, and it's very powerful. Um, basically, let's just say you want to take a sabbatical for a few years, okay? sabbatical, traveling, doing a mini retirement, being in a place where you don't have to worry about money. Money is coming in and you don't have to work for it directly, all right? So just write inside the comments, like what amount of monthly income would make you happy just coming in passively without you having to work, with you having full freedom to do as you please every waking hour. No alarm clocks, no commuting to work, no emails, no phone calls, no obligations to trade time for money. If you could, what's like the minimum amount of money that you would like to come in every single month for you to have full freedom and financial independence? Okay, Jennifer says 5,000. 4,000, 20,000. Pat says no amount of income. Okay, Pat. We're saying hypothetically, if you could just live off a monthly income, like kind of like a retirement. Like imagine if, you know, there was a, 
way of money going to your bank account magically and you can just enjoy yourself. 170,000 PM. I don't know the, the currency that is. Steven, if you could uh, specify uh, 10,000. Yes. Let's say all your debts are paid and you just had a single monthly income, right? So 10,000 a month, $20,000 a month, $5,000 a month. And you could just take off a few years in a mini retirement. What would that number be? Could be whatever you want it to be. So we have obviously the, the big money goal. And then we have also the minimum monthly goal. Okay, so let's go into the, the formula. It's super quick. So basically, there's a formula for financial independence, meaning that if you're able to save a specific amount of money, it's going to bring in passive income every single month without you having to do anything, okay? So let's say if you wanna retire at a certain age and never have to work again, or you wanna take a few years or five, 10 years to take a sabbatical to spend time with your family and loved ones or lay on a beach and do nothing, this amount of money would just keep coming in, okay? So whatever that amount of money is, what you wanna do is take the monthly amount of money and you multiply that by 12, okay? So those of you that are good at math, I, I'm not good at math, so I have a calculator. And if you could take that monthly amount of money, and I'll give you a hypothetical example. Let's say for example, my minimum amount of money is 5,000 a month, as an example, okay? And I multiply that by 12, that's $60,000. So just multiply your monthly income by 12, 12 months, and that is the yearly amount that you could just have coming in to live passively, right? Again, this is like the bare minimum. So for my example, $60,000 a year, if I did absolutely nothing and had all my debts paid, I could just live off of that, right? You take that yearly income and you multiply that by 20. So $60,000 times 20 is $1.2 million, right? So basically, with that amount of money, $1.2 billion saved just one time, if you invest that in a very safe long-term investment that yields 5% of returns, it's going to pay you that monthly income forever, okay? So if I wanted to make $60,000 per year, my main target is to save 20 times that, have it into a bank account, and then from there, at 5%, at the lowest interest rate, it's gonna return back to $60,000 per year, every single year, okay? So Steven is exactly on point, $1.2 million in the bank, okay? So, on the same token, if you want to double that amount, if you want to make you know twenty thousand um, dollars per month, you multiply that by twenty, and that's four million. And four million at five percent interest will bring in that money, twenty thousand dollars a month, consistently. Okay, it's not again like the end all be all exact formula right? There is obviously inflation. There's other elements that definitely affect this. But the main purpose of this and why I'm sharing with you guys is 
you have one, like your, your big dream goal, dream lifestyle of giving back, helping other people, charity, philanthropy. And then you have the minimum of a target of just kind of saying to yourself, okay, in the next 10 years, if I save $1.2 million and I invest it, then it develops passive income. So a big part of money is just understanding that it's energy, number one, and also understanding the dynamics of it, the laws of money, the laws of knowing that, okay, there's a lot of different ways to make money and there's a lot of different ways to reinvest the money that you already have. So it's bringing in money from different angles. So we have that target number. We have obviously the minimal investment that just brings in passive income. Now, we're not talking about money. Obviously, it's a subject that is coming up a lot in this conversation. And some people are triggered in a very positive way. Others are triggered in a negative way, right? Because sometimes it's even scary for people to think, oh my God, that's a lot of money. You save a million dollars. How long is that going to take? In this current circumstance, it seems impossible. Again, we're thinking from possibility and vision, but also understanding the laws of money. So I would love to know like what is coming up for you, right? As we're now talking about this subject and is there any clarity or questions you have in regards to this? I think this is cool because it's got one aspect is the practical side of things. So it's like when the practical side comes up, when the practical side is given to you, what comes up in terms of your patterns? Right. So that's a really, it's a really cool question because it's one thing to be in the space of, okay, what if I imagine this? What if that happens? And you can be in a, in a space of um, possibility. And then what also shows up when you actually imagine it being a reality, when you're actually saying, I need this amount, I need to put this down and this is what will happen. What then comes up to you? And some people may be scared because as, um, as you've mentioned, AJ, when we have an identity, if we have an identity around money and that identity isn't making the amount of money that we want, if you then shift to creating more money than what your identity thinks it should, you will always self-sabotage, right? You will always find a way to make less because that'll be death to the story of who you think you are. So that's a really, really cool space of, okay, let's imagine what, it, you know, this is what it takes to actually make it happen. What comes up for you? Is it death to the story of who you think you are? And if so, you can refer back to what AJ said earlier in terms of what do you need to do internally to shift that, um, to shift that identity and to, and to realign that with who you know you who you are deep down and who you want to be moving forward so that you can give contribute and grow something uh, that you truly desire. Absolutely. Yeah. I pre appreciate you sharing that Tyson, you know, cause a lot of it is like obviously the relationship with it and like what's coming up, you know, and obviously there, there's deeper levels to this and kind of uh, being in a situation where we could start to unravel the story and create new beliefs and um, obviously I want to give you guys some, some, some homework that has helped me tremendously. And uh, I, I also want to piggyback on a great point that, that, that Stephen made about his, you know, his passion life goal is helping his clients achieve this type of passive income through astute investments. And a lot of like what we're talking about here is if you're able to create that big target where you have obviously, let's say, investments that just bring in passive income to allow you to do as you please. You know, you have freedom. To me, financial freedom is the ability to do whatever you want, whether that is backpacking across Europe or developing a whole new business or just doing lives and videos and just serving people all day long. But the big power and what actually Tyson has helped me tremendously is just really thinking about if money did not matter to me, right? If I didn't care about making income, what would I be doing with my time and my energy? 
you know, because I think one of the biggest limits that we have, and sometimes when I look at some bad decisions that I made was based on the scarcity or needing to make money or let's say selling someone my program who I knew uh, wasn't a good fit, you know, and I signed up for uh, a lot of headaches and a lot of heartache as well. And it's like, wow, if, if money didn't exist and I'm just coming from a place of contribution and service and love, then everything changes because I'm not unattached to this money. And, and before you give us some homework, I know some people need to um, jump off on the, on the hour, but yes. um, before you give us some homework, maybe you could talk to us a little bit about what you just mentioned from the work we've done together and diving in deep and, um, and shifting some patterns. Maybe you can give us some indication because this group's going to be getting to know you a lot, uh, a lot, you know, deeper, uh, in, in the next coming weeks and months. So maybe just give a bit of an explanation on the work we've done together and what shifts you've seen within yourself. Once you start, uh, diving in deep and resolving a lot of these conflicts, maybe give us some indication there so that we can, uh, so that we can share some of that, um, with the group. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that in a lot of ways, uh, we're talking about identity here and our identity can help us or hurt us, you know, cause I think if identity is used in a very intelligent way, it can be very beneficial and very powerful. But in the same token, I'll give an example of, let's say, you know, Tyson was doing a lot of work with me about shifting my identity from being a millionaire entrepreneur, you know? So that identity of being a millionaire entrepreneur, it has a lot of power to it, it has a lot of abundance, and it allows me to show up in a certain way to help other people with their money, with their business, with their finances. But at the same time, it's extremely limiting because sometimes when you create a strong grip to a specific identity and things externally don't connect with that, you tend to suffer, you know? So there's a lot of negativity that comes with the things not aligning to your identity. And I think, you know, this is a very high level conversation and I believe you guys are high level enough to take it all in. In a lot of ways, you know, I look at identities being different hats, you know? So I choose this hat when I'm in the gym, I have a different identity to go in and attack the weights and run on the treadmill and push myself in a very aggressive way. And when I'm behind my laptop, I have a whole different identity of just being an entrepreneur, making wide decisions, being productive and being focused. So beyond all of our identities, we're far deeper than that. There's something a lot more profound than the hats that we wear, you know? So again, the identities are useful as a tool and it's powerful to create massive change very quickly. And one of the great things that Tyson has helped me with was the ability to peel away a lot of my different identities. So that of a businessman, that of a man, that of a healthy fit person, you know, these are all things that again, have gotten me to where I am, but sometimes what got you here won't get you there. And one of the great gifts that Tyson has is the ability to peel away all the different layers so you can really reconnect with who you are far beyond what we experience here on earth and the different hats that we wear. So I think he's one of the best in the world at it. And uh, there's a reason why we're all uh, in his group and listening to his wisdom and knowledge. Oh, thanks. For that. And I think it's, it's worth mentioning that AJ has created these shifts within himself because he's done the work. He actually started extending a lot of his meditations uh, past what he thought he could possibly do. And he's consistent with it. Every time we talk in a session, or whatever it may be, he's always talking about what, what's coming up for him and he's holding the space for those emotions to be there. He's working through them and creating. Uh, so he's doing the inner work. This isn't just something that snaps and all of a sudden he's creating these shifts like all of you are doing when you do an hour meditation or two hours, or even if it's an expansion to do half an hour, when you're doing that work and you're, you when you're sitting down, you're basically just breaking away the stories of who you thought you needed to be in order to be enough and in order to be safe, in order to be, you know, secure. And it's just what you're left with talking about identity. When you're in that space, you realize who you are is infinite, right? Who you are, your identity in, in, you know, in, in the consciousness is infinite. You have infinite possibilities. You have infinite creativity. You have just as much 
level of abundance available to you than anyone else in the world. And when you tap into that, that all of a sudden come becomes your identity and your, and you know, your identity can be someone where you have no identities, where you're not attached to anything or you're not attached to a certain amount of money or whatever it may be. But all of a sudden you start to have an infinite possibility and infinite creativity and infinite flow. And that's when you can start to apply these sort of things that AJ is teaching us here in terms of, uh, in terms of what goals do you want? What goals do you need? And then what possibilities can you work from to make that a reality? All right. So what, uh, what homework do you have for, for us, AJ, in terms of what we can do this week? And maybe we can even keep the conversation going in the, uh, in the chat, in the community um, so that we can keep this going and, and do it as a group. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and thank you for, for all that. You know, I appreciate you guys for being on this long. And uh, obviously my main purpose is to help you, to serve you with what actually worked for me. And, uh, you know, I mentioned that I had to go through a lot of different exercises and, and different mentors and coaches. I've read so many books about shifting my money beliefs. But there was one very powerful exercise that changed everything for me. And I when I was given this homework to do this exercise, I thought it was kind of stupid and it sounded so simple. I'm like, what? This is not going to do anything. I'm just wasting my time doing this. But I tell you, the moment I did it, I started to one experience a shift and literally weeks after everything shifted from my abundance mindset and how much money was coming into my life and my relationship with money totally changed. And that was really the groundbreaking moment that, that helped me to be where I am today. And this exercise is not going to take that long, maybe 20, 30 minutes of your own personal time. And it's very, very simple. Now, what you want to do is basically write the story of money in your life. And what you want to do is basically think of the earliest memory about money and how it came into your life initially. From that first memory of money, think about money up until the present day. And of course, the more detailed, the better. And all you have to do is write your story about money and your relationship with it to this current day. So for me, I remember being like three years old and sitting at the dinner table and my parents were fighting about money. My mother was saying, my, my dad is no good and he has a crappy job and he can provide for us. And they're fighting just about not making money. I was like, whoa, what's this money thing they're fighting about? And I tried to understand and comprehend. And finally, I started to understand what it was. So that was where it first entered my life. And then obviously through my adolescence and teenage years and adulthood, and then when I started a business, it was a totally different relationship. So the big homework is really, really simple. Just writing your personal story about money from when it first entered your life up until the present date. And there is no right or wrong to it. And one, it's just simply writing it out. That's, you know, something where you could do in your private time. But here is where the courageousness comes in and where I could even help you is if you post it inside the group, you know, because it's a private group. There's no judgment. And obviously, the more open and, and aware you are about your own truth and, and what's holding you back, your limiting beliefs, and also your vision, the more people can come co to collectively help. So super simple homework, story about money. When it started to the present day, part two, post it inside the group. And from there, just by doing the exercise, you'll get a lot of insights and breakthroughs. And number two, you start to then say, okay, well, this is my old story and when it comes to a story you get to keep uh, parts that serve you edit it rewrite it and create the new vision that's going to help you for the next year for the next decade and for the rest of your life so tyson is that clear awesome so one thing i've just done i've just created a post um in the group for all you guys so not only can you um interact with that but then aj will be able to see who's on this call so I just said, had a post that said, incredible group coaching call with AJ on money mindset. What is your earliest money memory? So maybe you can just give a brief uh, thing there uh, on what your first money memory was and then do the work. Like you said, 20, 30 minutes, write down your story 
uh, in more detail for yourself. And if you want to share that deeper detail uh, in your own posts or in your own video, man, that would be incredible. I'm, I'm going to be doing this as well. Um, but it's important that AJ knows who's on this call live as well. So you can help you interact with you. You can add him to your network. So um, commenting on that, uh, on that post that I just put up um, will help him see who was on this call and will help you interact with him and we can get each other's uh, we can get each other's story out there. And I love it because it, it provides a little bit of um, vulnerability, provides a little bit of insight for yourself. Because once you start sharing this, you can be honest with yourself, you can be honest with where you're at, you can be honest with everyone else, and we can start to share why we're in this group and how we're all going through it together. And um, yeah, that'd be incredible. So just if you want to just write one or two sentences on that, on that post in the comment, and yeah, do the work so that you can really start to understand. So I'm starting to do some journaling that's like uh, out, like takes an hour out of my day just journaling all of these possibilities and what I'm thinking. And, and man, it's so powerful to be able to get this stuff down on paper. Um, so that would be awesome. AJ, is there anything else you want to finish up on, my friend? Yeah, you know, like again, we're all here to help you, to serve you. This is the beautiful thing about this group and, you know, what Tyson has created. We're all in this together. And I think just even writing the first memory and, and kind of sharing the different stories, uh, you're going to start to see some uh, relatability with other people, you know? And uh, the great thing about it is the ability to see it in front of you because sometimes writing, getting out of your head on a piece of paper or on a screen is you get to see like, oh, so that's why I act this way. And, uh, you know, I'm inside the group. Uh, if you want to add me uh, as a friend or message me, if you have any questions, I'm here to support you and help you. And uh, yeah, Tyson, thank you for having me on and thank all of you guys for being here. You're very welcome, mate. You're very welcome. And especially if you're in the States, because AJ does hold some events and things like that, and you can easily go and see him in, in person and, and rock out with him. So um, definitely add him, definitely, uh, you know, definitely add him to your business network, business community, and uh, it'll mean the world of difference. So man, awesome. Thanks so much for people who are here live and uh, who love interacting. The, the group chat is always just pumping with so many different insights and so many different people wanting to share. So thanks so much, guys. I'll see you in the group. I'll see your comments on there. I'll jump on and uh, share my uh, vulnerability and my stories and what I, what's coming up for me. And let's keep this conversation going. So thanks so much, AJ. Thank you. I want to give a shout out to Pat too. She's the most giving woman that I know. Just gives so much to charity and helping people and she's on the line. So uh, she's an amazing woman, inspiration for me. So thank you. Beautiful. Everyone, if you can see Pat in the group, connect with her as well. Some amazing people here. So thanks so much, guys. Awesome. I'll see you in the group. Take care. Take care.